Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Utility Sports. Today, I'm going to be diving a little bit further into our Deshaun Watson trade news. We do have a video up on the channel, so if you haven't watched that already, here is a card for that. Go check it out right now. But first, I am checking in on Deshaun Watson and the New York Jets. I am a New York Jets fan. For those of you who don't know, there's my Le'Veon Bell jersey. For the Jets, there's quite a few different things worth monitoring when it comes to Deshaun Watson. One, obviously you're getting a great franchise quarterback. Deshaun Watson is a top 10 QB in the league. No question, I think a majority of teams should be interested in calling the Houston Texans and at least inquiring about Deshaun Watson. Second of all, for the New York Jets, there was a question at QB. Joe Douglas did not draft Sam Darnold. Robert Sala is not the coach that was there when we had drafted Sam Darnold. He's lived through a different GM and a different head coach I don't think Sam Darnold is the answer. I don't know if Joe Douglas feels that way. I surely do not know if Robert Sala does feel that way. We did win our last two games of the season. That might have bought Darnold more time. However, Watson is a clear-cut improvement over Sam Darnold. That is a big part of why we are looking at this closer. And third, the Jets need stability. That is something they haven't had since their last playoff appearance in 2010 when they had Rex Ryan. Darrell Rivas, Antonio Camardi, that defense, Calvin Pace. They had a built team. They had Nick Mangold, the Brickishaw Ferguson on that offensive line. There was stability even with Mark Sanchez at QB. There was stability throughout that roster. We had leaders. We had guys who wanted to be there, worked hard, and were great players. That is something right now the New York Jets do not have a lot of. Obviously, the great players part, sure. But the other thing is there's just not a true leader on this team, someone who I'm looking at and saying, yeah, I think he'll for sure be a New York Jeff for the next five, six years. You know, maybe Quinn and Williams, I could look at him being a Jeff for the next five, six years, possibly, maybe Marcus May. But again, I'm not very confident in those uh, assumptions. Makai Becton, I would feel very confident that he will be a New York Jeff for the next five to six years. He is probably the only guy that I'd be willing to actually bet money on him being a New York Jeff by the year 2025, 2026. And that is something the New York Jets need to look to do is find a guy that's going to be there a long-term, someone you can actually build around. Deshaun Watson is that guy, okay? He's under contract. New York's a big market. I think the pairing would make sense. Robert Sala could bring him in. He could be the quarterback for the defensive-minded coach. I would really like that pairing. Joe Douglas finds his franchise quarterback and me as a New York Jets fan, I would be ecstatic to be cheering on Deshaun Watson on Sundays. So let's take a look at what this could cost. Obviously, that's the big question. We need Houston to agree to a deal for Deshaun Watson. What could that look like? Well, we have pick two in the draft, and we have pick 23 in the draft from the Seattle Seahawks trade with Jamal Adams. We also have two first-rounders next year, obviously a byproduct of trading Jamal Adams as well. Looking at this now, what would, some, what would be something that I'd be willing to give up to bring in Jamal Adams? I'm assuming Houston would want a quarterback back. That would be Sam Darnold. I'd be willing to part with Sam Darnold for sure in a heartbeat. Now, I'm sure they're going to ask for pick two. And I'm a little hesitant to give that up, not because I want a QB, but because I would want Panay Sewell. If we could get Deshaun Watson in a trade and keep pick two, that could be a phenomenal pairing getting Becton, Sewell, or even a wide receiver, Devontae Smith or Jamar Chase at pick two and grabbing uh, Deshaun Watson still as the franchise QB with Becton as the franchise tackle. That is a good way to really move this franchise forward. However, I don't think it's possible we get Deshaun Watson without giving up pick two in the draft. So that would be on the way out. So now I'm looking at, on the way out, Sam Darnold, draft pick number two overall. And to be honest with you, I think it would take at least another first, maybe even two. So let's throw in pick 23. Obviously, it's hard to throw in picks this year. But I think a big part of doing so is maybe next year, we have all this asset still that we can move around with, try and buy back more picks. Looking at this as a whole here, we probably will end up getting the Giants' fourth-round pick and not their fifth-rounder because I'm expecting Leonard Williams to re-sign there. But who knows? He might not. It might just stay as a fifth-round pick. 
We also have the Seahawks third rounder. So maybe, maybe we don't do pick 23 in this. Maybe we, the Jets are stingy, don't want to give up pick 23, want to have a first round pick this year. I totally would understand that. So instead, they give up Seattle's first rounder next year and our own first rounder next year in that deal. So we're looking at pick two out of the door. Huge value. Our first rounder next year, we would be better with Deshaun Watson. Would not be a, a top three pick, probably. And Seattle's pick, that'll be outside of the top 20. Seattle's a good team. They're consistently good. They'll be a playoff team. That pick is outside the top 20 for sure. But that is kind of the package we're looking at. Sam Darnold also going there. To be honest, if I'm Houston, I don't even know if I'd love that enough to give up a guy like Deshaun Watson who's under contract. Watson's really going to have to leverage and leverage just like what James Harden did in Houston to force his actual way out. If I'm the Houston Texans right now, I'm listening to offers, but I'm not acting quickly. There are, is a lot of time. They just signed an extension this past year. There is a lot of time to figure something out. You don't have to hit the panic button and trade him. A team is going to have to blow you away with an offer. The New York Jets are doing so here giving up pick two, Sam Darnold, two first-rounders next year from one being the New York Jets pick itself and one being from the Seattle Seahawks from the Jamal Adams trade. And yes, now I'm sure you're saying to me that is a ton of compensation to give up. And it is. You're definitely right. But let me frame it this way. Would you give up Jamal Adams pick two and Sam Darnold for Deshaun Watson? I think you probably would. I know I would. The improvement at quarterback is much more important than a safety. And that's essentially what we're looking at here is giving up Jamal Adams. We actually get to keep one of those picks. We give up one of our own uh, instead next year. But I'm, I'm willing to mortgage two firsts, which is essentially what Jamal Adams is, with an extra first in there and Sam Darnold. Because trading Sam Darnold for any mid-tier quarterback that's better than him is probably going to cost at least a second. So moving up to a guy like Deshaun Watson, who is one young, proven, a competitor, extended long-term that you know you're going to have, those are four great things to have moving forward for a franchise. As a Jets fan, I'm willing to roll the firsts. We still have a lot of late-day picks. Maybe we are aggressive this year, moving down, moving out a bit to pick up a whole bunch of 2022 assets. We see here we have the Steelers pick from the Avery Williamson trade. Yes, I'm aware we really need to build this roster up. No, Deshaun Watson does not come in and turn us into a Super Bowl team. No, we're even close to that. I'd be surprised if we made the playoffs the first year with Deshaun Watson. This isn't about one or two seasons. This is about 12 seasons. Think about if the Packers traded Aaron Rodgers in 2010. That's what we're looking at. Not that Deshaun Watson is going to be the greatest player of all time, but everyone knew in 2010 that Aaron Rodgers would be there at least eight to 10 years. And the value on that was huge. Deshaun Watson could be a New York Jet for 10 to 12 years. I don't want to mortgage that for anything. I would be willing to roll the dice and give up whatever Houston really asked for as long as it's reasonable to improve from Sam Darnold to Deshaun Watson. Because all I know at pick two, if I draft a quarterback like Justin Fields or Zach Wilson, there is no guarantee that those guys are top 15 QBs in the NFL. As of right now, I know Deshaun Watson is a top 10 QB, and I really want him to be a New York Jet at the end of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.